As a college educator, you're used to meeting the needs of a diverse student population. However, you may have begun to notice recently that there's a new element of diversity surfacing across your campus. Generational diversity is a topic that has become integral to discussions about successful teaching and learning strategies in higher ed. The 21st century has certainly ushered in a cascading array of new forms of socialization and communication. Blogs, wikis, iPods, MySpace, Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, Delicious, Second Life, Flickr, Get the Picture, and the folks who speak this new lingo are those who grew up in the midst of its formation. You know who they are, the students who converse face to face with you while listening to their iPods, the students who have the incomprehensible ability to text message without looking at their phone. These students exist in a landscape peppered with leftover artifacts that bear no relationship to their own experiences. The artifacts have deep meaning to most of their professors, but to them, they're objects with no context. These students have never known a life that requires one to load film into a camera, dial a phone, be in front of a television at 9 p.m in order to watch a show that airs at 9 p.m. Or the necessity of purchasing an entire album just to have that one song that you love. Their life is customized, mobile, colorful, interactive, dynamic, fast, and on demand. They're simply different from you and I. And this difference stems from the very different social environment in which they grew up. Young people born after 1980 have recently been branded as millennials, the Y generation or net geners, and they have characteristics that are unique from previous generations. Millennials also comprise a large proportion of higher ed students today and are the future leaders of our country. While we pause to acknowledge the unique characteristics of millennials, it's critical that we also evaluate some of their methods of communicating and socializing, and in the process, we may uncover some powerful teaching and learning tools. So how are traditionalist boomers, Gen Xers, and millennials different? Well, let's take a look. Generally, there are characteristics that are common amongst generational groups. For example, traditionalists born between 1925 and 1945 grew up in a time of economic and political uncertainty. They were influenced by models of structure and hierarchy. The traditional generation are those who were usually employed by the same corporation for an entire lifetime and approached each day of their work with loyalty and commitment. Baby boomers, born between 1944 and 1964, were raised in an optimistic social climate of change and were infused with a commitment to make a difference in this world, no matter what it takes. They prefer paper-based activities like reading the newspaper or sending letters over digital versions. Boomers want access to all information so they can pour over it and think about it. In a job, baby boomers are likely to take on more and more work because they are committed to doing the right thing. Gen Xers born between 1965 and 1980 are the skeptical generation that witnessed their loyal traditionalist parents get laid off after a lifetime of service to their employer. Also labeled the latchkey generation, Xers look out for themselves. 
They want information that is important to them and expect flexibility when it comes to work. Xers are in search of a work-life balance and are much more likely than previous generations to jump ship if they aren't get getting what they're looking for. Millennials, on the other hand, operate in a fast-paced digital environment. They don't want to deal with paper. Millennials are used to simultaneous stimulation, listening to music, emailing, and watching TV at the same time. Millennials want information instantaneously and enjoy the opportunity to leave their mark and express themselves visually if possible. In fact, there's very little about the millennial experience that isn't visual. Millennials are, content, are content creators, and we know from the popularity of blogs, wikis, MySpace, Facebook, the popularity of these tools and sites are also evidence of the role of the internet in the way the millennial generation socializes. Social networking technologies have revolutionized the notion of keeping in touch. These folks are never out of touch. They're always connected to their friends through the use of personalized and expressive blogs. Some of us wonder how millennials feel so comfortable expressing themselves to broad online audiences. But remember, this is also the first generation to be raised in front of mom and dad's camcorder. Their first steps, first words, birthdays, and awkward moments were recorded and broadcasted over and over in front of audiences. So making the jump to a debut on YouTube really isn't such a big deal for these folks. It feels natural for millennials to travel in herds, too. They go where their friends go, and we know this from RateMyProfessor.com, don't we? And they prefer customized experiences. All their essentials, by the way, provide options for them. Cell phones and iPods that come in as many colors as jelly beans, individual ringtones to reflect their personality, iPods and MP3 players that hold thousands and thousands of songs in addition to favorite movies, music videos, and personalized photo albums. As a result of this customization, this is the first generation to not be branded by a particular style of music. Why oh why would I listen to a radio station playing music that they want me to hear when I could listen to my iPod that's customized with my own music library. Oh, and by the way, text messaging is a millennial's preferred method of communication. Email is so yesterday. So where does that leave us? Well, in a challenging position, College educators need to engage students in new ways, inside and outside the classroom. We are educators. We've known for decades that learning is a social activity. Research proved this long ago. The amazing realization here is the technologies our millennial students utilize on a daily basis are powerful learning tools also. Millennials are immersed in a life that values relationships formed through online social networking technologies. They experience feelings of compassion and loyalty online. They provide support and advice online. They foster community online. Yet most professors today have never experienced what it feels like to be a member of an online community. As educators, we covet opportunities to engage our students in reflective discussions about course material. We understand that this is the path that leads our students to deep learning. We know the greatest learning experiences are those that touch individuals deeply and provide opportunity for personal commentary and connection. Should we po be pausing at this very moment 
to embrace social networking tools and weave them more thoroughly into the design of our classes, regardless of whether or not we're teaching online or on ground? Should we and our students be blogging our thoughts and reflections regularly and sharing these with the class and the world? Should we be taking this opportunity to engage iPods as tools to keep our students more connected to course materials or give them opportunities to review class lectures over and over again without the fear, fear of feeling stupid upon asking for clarification four or five times in a classroom? In this digital society of ours, our classrooms have no walls. By harnessing the power of online technologies, we can foster powerful learning communities that will engage our students and place them in the center of their learning. Are these challenges or are these opportunities? That's up to us to figure out.